The following is taken from Pope St. Pius X's Apostolic Exhortation to the Catholic Clergy on Priestly Sanctity. Though the whole exhortation is specifically for the clergy, in some ways this selection can be applied to the laity as well, in that the saintly Pope expresses very well the necessity of prayer for all Christians. It is as follows. Prayer, an essential condition of sanctity. Since, as everyone realizes, holiness of life is the fruit of the exercise of the will inasmuch as it is strengthened by the aid of divine grace, God has made abundant provision lest we should at any time lack the gift of grace, if we desire it. We can obtain it, in the first place, by constant prayer. There is, in fact, such a necessary link between holiness and prayer that the one cannot exist without the other. The words of Chrysostom on this matter are an exact expression of the truth. I consider it that it is obvious to everyone that it is impossible to live virtuously without the aid of prayer. And Augustine sums up shrewdly, he truly knows how to live rightly who knows rightly how to pray. Christ himself, by his constant exhortations and especially by his example, has even more firmly inculcated these truths. To pray, he withdrew into desert places or climbed the mountain alone. He spent whole nights absorbed in prayer. He paid many visits to the temple. Even when the crowds thronged about him, he raised his eyes to heaven and prayed openly before them. When nailed to the cross in the agony of death, he supplicated the Father with a strong cry and tears. Let us be convinced, therefore, that a priest must be especially devoted to the practice of prayer if he is to maintain worthily his dignity and to fulfill his duty. All too frequently one must deplore the fact that prayer is a matter of routine rather than of genuine fervor. The psalms are recited at the appointed times in a negligent manner. A few short prayers are said in between. There is no further thought of consecrating part of the day to speaking with God, with pious aspirations to him. And it is the priest more than any other who is bound to obey scrupulously the commandment of Christ. We ought always pray, a command which Paul so insistently inculcated. Be instant in prayer, watching in it with thanksgiving. Pray without ceasing. How numerous are the opportunities of turning to God in prayer, which present themselves daily to the soul which is eager for its own sanctification and the salvation of others. Anguish of soul, the persistent onslaught of temptation, or our lack of virtue, slackness and failure in our works, our many offenses and negligences, fear of the divine judgment, all these should move us to approach the Lord with tears, in order to obtain help from him, and also to increase without difficulty the treasure of merit in his eyes. Nor should our tearful supplication be for ourselves alone. In the deluge of crime which spreads far and wide, we especially should implore and pray for divine clemency. We should appeal insistently to Christ, who in his infinite mercy lavishes his graces in his wonderful sacrament. Spare, O Lord, thy people. A point of capital importance is that a certain time should be given daily to meditation on the eternal truths. No priest can neglect this practice without incurring a grave charge of negligence and without detriment to his soul. The saintly abbot Bernard, when writing to Eugene III, his former pupil who had become Roman pontiff, frankly and emphatically admonished him never to omit daily divine meditation. He would not omit as an excusing cause even the many weighty cares which the supreme pontificate involves. In justification of this advice, he enumerated with great prudence the benefits of the practice of meditation. Meditation purifies the source from which it comes, the mind. It controls affections, guides our acts, corrects excesses, rules our conduct, introduces order and dignity into our lives. It bestows understanding of things divine and human. It brings clarity where there is confusion, binds what is torn apart, gathers what is scattered, investigates what is hidden seeks out the truth, weighs what has the appearance of truth, and shows up what is pretense and falsehood. It plans future action and reviews the past, so that nothing remains in the mind that has not been corrected or that stands in need of correction. When affairs are prospering, it anticipates the onset of adversity, and when adversity comes, it seems not to feel it, and this it displays in turn prudence and fortitude.